keep talking about the, the political significance of the Days in Solidarity with African People campaign yes. yeah. because um, we want to bring it to Boston. Yeah. It's a series of events that host Chairman O'Malley Eschatella and Penny Hess. And this year we want to also bring um, uh, Kunde Mwambita, formerly known as Yashika Clemens. Kunde Nagita um, Mwambita. Yes. Yeah, this is her here on the cover of the July issue. Yes, that is her. Um, and formerly known as Yashika Clemens, um, she is the mother of Dominique Battle. Dominique Battle and her two friends, uh, Ashanti and Lanaya, were brutally murdered by the Pinellas County Sheriff's Department uh, in, in late Florida. March in Florida. They and we are trying to. by the police. They, they were rammed into a pond. Their car, that the, their car was like rammed into a pond in a cemetery. like late at night and there's, there's like clear evidence that the cops were chasing them super high speeds. And these are like teenage girls, like teenage African girls. Um, Unfortunately, the colonial white media tried to portray these murdered girls as criminals after saying that they stole the car. Um, even though you cannot charge dead people for a crime, this just goes to show the inherent white power bias that comes in media. And I was actually shocked that someone in my close circles believed that the police did not murder these girls. It just goes to show how deeply entrenched um, these horrible ideas about the police relationship to African people in this country run in the media and influence our beliefs. Um, but these these three girls were murdered and we are trying to get unity and solidarity around this campaign. We want um, Sheriff Bob Gaultiere to be fired. Uh, he was the one that oversaw this and let these girls drown. He, we want the off, uh, Howard Skaggs, who was one of the officers on duty, and his fellow officers to be prosecuted for murder. We believe there should be reparations to the families of Dominique, Lanaya, and Ashanti, and we believe there should be black community control of the police, which is hiring and firing power. Um, black people should decide what role the police have in their communities. Uh, there should be an end to this occupying force. Black, because uh, officers don't even live in these communities. They're just sitting there waiting to arrest and kidnap people. Mm -hmm. If they see a group of black people walking down the street, they assume that there's trouble and make a problem where none exists. They're not protecting and serving, they're harassing and murdering. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's why we believe in not getting more officers of color, yeah, not in not getting like body cams. We. Uh, it should be black community control of the police and holding police officers accountable. I believe last year over a thousand people of all different colors were murdered by the police and zero officers went to court for murder. Um, yeah, there's this site killedbypolice.net. It's like a, a website that just, because often police don't document their own m murders that they do. So like individual citizens or people have made this this website where it's like every eight hours or so you can see it's yeah. legitimately terrifying even just recently with the somerville police union president mcgrath uh you know ordering the uh, mayor to take down the black lives matter sign which he didn't which he didn't yeah. which i'm very grateful for um and one thing i want to say on the black lives matter banner was um i feel like there are a lot of people the thing is, white people can say black lives matter until we're blue in the face, but what does that mean when 98% of the land is owned by white people, 90% of businesses in the U.S. are owned by white people, and the state, the government, openly serves the interest of white power by constantly murdering and locking up African and Latin and uh, colonized people. Um, so, you know, if if you, unless you're supporting self-determination for black people and paying reparations to a black-led liberated economy that puts power, real power and control over their own lives in the hands of black or African people, then you're saying that black lives matter only if white people still own and control everything. Mm. So that's why we have this reparations challenge because we want to funnel resources from the white community that materially support the African liber liberation movement, the African revolution. Really anything white people do whether it's, you know, 
making art or hosting events, I think should be about in solidarity with African liberation. Otherwise, we're continuing to separate ourselves from humanity and live in this bubble that's about to yeah. be burst yeah. because the revolution is coming whether or not yeah. white people pay reparations. Yeah. Oppressed people are rising up all over the world and taking back their resources mm -hmm. and the reparations challenge and the Ahuru Solidarity Movement is this place for white people to really stand and put our bodies on the line and our resources on the line to stand and struggle on the right side of history um, to build this world where no one has to be exploited anymore mm -hmm. because it doesn't have to be this way. And mm -hmm. re reparations as a concept, it's not for African black people. Like Reparations is for white people to be able to deal with our legacy of slavery and like give it back like to somehow it, it's not just money like it's energy money is energy it's not like paying money it's, it's like, not just cutting a check to an back. individual it's, like it's we stole it and it's like yeah it's not just about the money it's like the your mindset of like i'm giving it back because it's yours even though like i worked my job and i made my money like who built that job that i had or like like it's it's we it's really a bigger picture than just like the Thinking, money in my pocket is mine. It's like, well, how did I get that? Like, Think of this image of Wall Street in New York is built on a graveyard of 15,000 slaves. Literally. There's an uh, enslaved African burial ground under there. And um, a really excellent book by um, Dr. Joy DeGruy, Post-Traumatic Slave Syndrome. She, she has a talk on YouTube in this book where she talks about like people analyzed the muscle matter like they were somehow mummified or something and they you could tell that they were f literally worked to death like the muscles was like deteriorating from their bones like the these buried body african bodies un under wall street and even the name wall street comes from like a wall was built to keep out the indigenous people who are of that the muncie delaware nation were like on and and some of some, some of the oldest universities where white people where majority white people get access to go because Harvard. of the relationship between <laughs> race and class and how white people have always historically have had greater access to wealth so that we can go to these universities get this education how are those universities built how did they get the funds the oldest universities got their funds from selling slaves and yeah this was so there yeah. will be campaigns to get the universities to pay reparations too because we know that individual white people while we owe reparations that is a historical reality it will never be enough even if the US Treasury and all the universities and all the capitalist institutions that are constantly stealing sucking Africa dry of its beauty and its mm. resources even if we paid everything back it will never be enough for the brutal assault the psychological trauma, the immense human suffering that has come as the result of capitalism and white power. So there just there needs to be material solidarity and a shift in our thinking about what this world really represents and what our opportunities really come from and how we can all unite around the revolutionary work of the African People's Socialist Party to build a liberated economy that will benefit everybody mm -hmm. in the long run. It's because that's the thing is you're being bombarded by bombs and brutality and murder and then it's like by the latest iPhone or PlayStation. I mean, there's there's real psychological. Uh, they really use you know very um, strategic psychological moves to to just uh, forget about that. Pay no mind. Look at this shiny object. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. people are so very you know easily manipulated. Uh, and the key to making change is to organize. Organize. Yes. Organized. This is the most organized movement I've ever known or been part of. The Uhuru movement. They they have a Can I see some yeah yeah. They have a they have a long term plan. Like it's not just today this event whatever. It's like they have a plan. They're building the black economy because they know one day like the tower will like capitalism is and will fall. It is current. That's why like it's, I mean it's parasitic. It relies on stealing from other countries and other people, and there's nothing left to steal. And yeah. also people are like. F this, you can't steal from us anymore. Yes. Yes. There's, uh, there's uprisings all over the world like, that we need to get on the right side mm -hmm. of and, and like we need this, to support. Like this eco side, like all this climate chaos that we're in. Yeah. It's the same concept, like this crisis of rape culture, like homelessness, all of these oppressions, all of these things everywhere, it's the same 
like Hydra monster, like all these different heads of the Hydra monster, like the belly, the the thing that connects them all is like global capitalism, colonialism, like white capitalist colonialism, like is the the thing to attack. So like exactly, like we don't we, our movement. We don't go after racism. Like we go after colonialism because racism is built like off of colonial. Like it's the, the ideological target. underpinnings yeah. of colonialism. It's what justifies colonialism. Mm -hmm. Um, and I want to say that also as someone dedicated to ending rape culture, that's another reason why I pay reparations and support the African People's Socialist Party is because, you know, um, rape was a tool of colonialism yeah. and it was, um, you know, um, the Euro-American culture of sexual violence was born out of the assault on Africa where colonizers used rape as a tool of subjugation to steal and enslave African women and people. And centuries before the term human trafficking was coined, the massive trafficking of African human beings during the slave trade involved sexual domination of African women. And, you know, this is, if we want to question why does rape happen every eight seconds, why do some of my close men friends have these histories of sexual violence. It's because they're taught in this system that that is normal. Rape is normal because we live in a slave master society that was built yeah. off of genocide. And to, it's worth noting that um, the first stock on the stock market were um, African babies. Like Africans, um, African people were penned in, like African women in particular, like they were so dehumanized that like their uter like their body was considered profit because it's like the more baby so they were put in pens they were like forcibly raped because when an african woman had a child like that was like a, a slave Oops. like an enslaved person that would produce all this profit like work in the fields like could like this human child could was seen as a capital investment even the word to invest like the history of this word is from like your child or they're like I don't know the the exact word but it's the history of the word interest is based on like human baby and like like yes. African women in particular like this cult rape culture like yeah it's 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 rape it's culture is synonymous with white culture mm -hmm. and that is why um, you know, this is a, this reparations and the support for African liberation is a chance for white people to rectify this violent culture and join with the rest of humanity. This is and remarkable. I, I mean, and just in this matter, solving all it's the solving all the problems. <laughs> and it's just, I mean, I'm absolutely, um, I just admire the both of you and the Uhuru, everyone, all of you that are dedicated to this, because it is, uh, you're truly bringing on a revolution that'll change the world. And you know, I've also for a while I thought like as a DJ I was like, oh, you know, the way that we can end a lot of this uh, a lot of this inequality, uh, gender inequality is get more women or more people of color or more people in the in industry, you know, and then I realized like, no, we need to totally dismantle industry because it relies on the looting and the rape of the entire world in order to exist. So we really need to look out for opportunism, mm -hmm. you know, because um, getting more people involved in industry is really about uplifting the few, but it's still at the expense of the many. So it's a, that's why the, the key is complete revolution, mm -hmm. complete overturn of this baby slaughtering, resource stealing, genocidal white power system that has a gun pointed at the oh. entire world. Even just the 29, how, how many of the Child and Family Services has 29 offices in the state of Massachusetts and you know, they, they purposely do, you know, wait for these, you know, men to be sent to jail for minor misdemeanors or you know, nonviolent crimes, and then they go in and they tear those families apart. And that's exactly. getting to the root. You know, the new, they get to the nucleus, tear them apart, and just get systematic, perpetuated um, it, oppression. It dehumanizes, it dehumanizes people. Uh, yeah. It demoralizes people. Yeah. That's why we need political organizations so badly, because human beings, we are, we are creatures, you mm -hmm. know? Like ants, if someone smashes an ant pile, they build a bigger pile the next day because they're organized because they all have the same party line. Mm -hmm. You know, they are part of an organization. They have the ants educate themselves on how to build everything together. You know, they probably, I don't know how ant brains work, <laughs> but they probably have long disagreement. And you know, political disagreements are good on how we're going to get this stuff, how in our building of black power, how are we going to deal with sexual violence?
How are we going to deal with all these things without using these colonial systems? And the African People's Socialist Party is doing this work. They are largely yeah. led by same gender loving, gender non-conforming, you know, and women mm -hmm. um, who, who ex you know, experien experientially understand all the different contradictions yeah. that exist, you know, amongst human beings and solving all those problems in the building of black power.